Your A1C is more than just a number. In this video, I'm going to help you understand how your A1C result translates to a blood sugar level, an average blood sugar level, and what your A1C is even measuring. This behind the scenes A1C science can help you understand what that number really means when it comes to your day-to-day -day diabetes management. Frustrated with your A1C right now? This video will help you understand how to improve your A1C. All right, the first thing you need to know about A1C science is that your A1C is measuring the amount of sugar in your bloodstream that has attached itself to red blood cells throughout your body. But red blood cells are kind of turned over, which means basically you get new ones every three months. That's why we get A1C tests no sooner than every three months. But even that isn't equal, okay? It's actually more complicated. It's not an even spread of the last three months that affect your A1C. Let's say you get your A1C done at the end of March. January's blood sugars are 25% of your A1C results at the end of March. February's blood sugars are 25% of your A1C result at the end of March. And then that last month is 50% of your A1C results at the end of March. That does kind of mean if you're a little nervous about your A1C and your appointment is like, you know, March 31st, well, giving it all you've got during the month of March is going to help that A1C result. Even if January and February might have been a little messy. The next thing you need to know about your A1C is that it actually translates to what's called an EAG, an Estimated Average Glucose Level. Please forgive some of the funny noise you're gonna hear in this video. The Diabetes Nerd YouTube studio is getting a new roof right now. But we stopped for nothing. We're still filming. All right, so your EAG means that you can take any A1C level and translate it to an average blood sugar level. Now we all know our blood sugars can range easily any day of the week from 50 to 300 sometimes, but your EAG is finding the average, the general area that your blood sugars are hanging out the most often. For example, an A1C of 8% is an average blood sugar of 204. An A1C level of 6% is an average blood sugar level of 135. That means that person's blood sugar is hanging out around 135 most of the time. But we all know our CGM graphs can look like this, right? I'm sure you have days when it looks like this. This estimated average glucose number is to give you a rough idea of what's going on in your diabetes management. If your A1C is 9%, which is an average blood sugar level of 240, that tells you something. It tells you very clearly that your blood sugars are hanging out nearly 100 points higher than your goal A1C if you're aiming for 6%. 100 points higher. That gives you something to do. If you want an A1C below 7%, that means your average blood sugar levels your kind of regular spot to spend as much time as possible needs to be below 158. So you can look at your A1C level and that tells you a big picture fact about your blood sugars. If you want your A1C to be lower, you need to adjust your insulin doses with support from your healthcare team. Change how you're dosing insulin to get your blood sugars down into the range that actually equates to the A1C that you want. We usually think of, all right, I'm managing my diabetes and oh, here's my A1C result. That tells me about my diabetes. Let's do it in reverse. Hey, I'm managing my diabetes. I want a certain A1C. I'm gonna manage my blood sugars to get the A1C that I want. And yes, lifestyle habits can help too. If you really wanna improve your insulin sensitivity so you don't need as much insulin to get your blood sugar levels down into the range that you're aiming for, exercise. Exercise, my friends, it makes such a difference. If you are not currently walking every single day for 30 minutes, try it. 
If you're struggling with a high A1C and high blood sugar levels, and you just start walking 30 minutes every day, your blood sugar levels are going to come down, not just during the walk, but across the day. Exercise is one of the most powerful tools you have to help bring your blood sugars down, improve insulin resistance so you're more sensitive to insulin, which makes it easier to manage blood sugars in the range that you're aiming for. If you're nervous about exercising with insulin on board because you've had a lot of lows, I teach you exactly how to exercise safely while taking insulin in this book, Exercise with Type 1 Diabetes. Find it on Amazon. Remember, your A1C is just a number, but it means a lot. It can tell you something that can help you understand the big picture of your diabetes management.